three, four. Hey everyone, this is Mitchell from New Dawn Aquaculture. We're a coral farm located in Edmonton, Alberta that focuses on sustainably and ethically producing coral for the Canadian market. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the genuses of corals that you'll find on our website that really doesn't have a lot of information about it online. Dipastria. I can't really talk to you about Dipastria without going a little bit in depth on coral taxonomy. You see, in 2014, a very popular group of corals in the hobby known as Favias went through a massive reclassification. Some were moved to Goniastria, some to Sealastria, some to Favites or a couple other genuses, but for the most part they were moved to Dipastria. And when you hear about someone talking about a Favia in this hobby, they're almost always actually referring to a Dipastria. That's not to say that the genus Favia is completely dead, there are actually two remaining species belonging to it, but they're both from a part of the world where coral collection has never been legal. I understand the frustration that comes with us having to always change what we're calling these animals as coral taxonomies updated, but technically that animal in your aquarium that you've been calling a Favia for years, it's not a Favia, and it hasn't been a Favia since 2014. And if it actually was a favia, you would not want to tell anybody because it would be totally illegal to have one. So how do we tell if the favia in our aquarium is actually a Dipastrea, or is it perhaps one of the ones that was moved to Sealastria, Goniastria, or Favites? It can be really hard to tell and all the corals that are loosely defined as brain corals have a lot of similarities and they're difficult to identify to a genus level and especially difficult to identify to a species level. And I'm no coral taxonomist, so I'm going to refer to an expert on this one, specifically Joe Rowlett. In Indo-Pacific Corals, he writes, to differentiate Dipastreas from other brain corals, Dipastreas typically have corallites that are often widely spaced and never have fused walls, though a few confusingly have double walls. Now that I've gotten the coral taxonomy out of the way and I've explained what a Dipastrea even is, let's talk about the care requirements. The care requirements for Dipastrea are well established. They're just the care requirements that used to be associated with favias. Much like how the care requirements for Acropora are the care requirements that have been given to all SPS corals, the care requirements for Dipastrea are pretty much the care requirements that are associated with all LPS corals. Dipastreas like lower flow and lower light. You can definitely acclimate them to medium flow and medium light, although in the coral farm we've noticed they tend to color up better and grow faster in a lower flow, lower light environment. They tend to like slightly dirtier water conditions. You definitely don't want to run pristine water chemistry. You also don't want it being too polluted, but you can run your water slightly more dirty than you would for SPS corals. They also love to eat. Dipastrea tends to be a slightly slower growing coral, but it definitely grows a lot faster and colors up better with regular feedings. So for us in our coral farm, when we're trying to grow these colonies out as fast as we can, feeding them often is a big part of that. One thing to watch out for with Dipastreas is they can be fairly aggressive. At nighttime, sweeper tentacles come out. I've seen them anywhere from two to four inches and they can pack a pretty serious punch. I would expect the Dipastrea to win most of the fights it gets into. So just be careful and make sure when you're placing it on your rock work that you give it plenty of space. We've definitely been asked why we don't farm favias at New Dawn Aquaculture and what Dipastreas even are. I know coral taxonomy can be very confusing, it's always changing and it's hard to keep track of, but we do our best to always have the most accurate information possible on our website. So I hope this video has helped clear up some of that confusion, but trust me, I understand it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're going to be doing more videos on all of the coral strains we farm, the dry goods we use to farm those corals, and the captive redfish we sell. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.